Now, I could have got a Tesla roof rack for £350, which seems expensive, and then spent another one, £200 putting bike carriers on the top to put my bike on. But this just seems like a simple, lightweight solution. Let's see how good it is. It does seem really well packaged. In the box, you've got the suction cups. These are for the back wheels of the bikes. And then you've got these things here. And then you put your front forks on there. Also got some tools, and attachments, instruction book, and then here is the device itself. Now I went for the two bike option in the hope that it would fit in the front, but I think that might be a bit too big, but we'll have a look. Look at that. It's like it's made for it. The next step is to remove the suction cup protectors. They just pop off and then uh, stick on the roof. It does say a little bit of moisture helps. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on these before I put them on. And the curvature of the roof means that, you can see that one's not even touching at the moment. So when you put these on, you press down and then you pump this. So let's give it a go. So the, the, oh it's stuck already, the roof's, in, the roof's in two parts, so there's this part, this part. So I'm going to put the front bits here and then kind of line the back bits up. So see what happens if I press that down and start pumping. And then when the white bit disappears it means it's stuck basically, let's try this one. Okay, let's go around the other side. But there is a bit of flex in that, so let's try this one. Shall I do this one first? Let's try this one. That one's uh, on. Let's check that one. And then this one. Uh, and that. It's like it's on. So normally you would just put your take your front wheel off, put that through, and it goes on there. Because my front wheel is held on with this, it's a gravel bike, I need to buy these spacers that just pop in. And I kind of feel they should come with it. And I wasn't entirely sure which size I'd need, so I bought both and I'll just send back the ones I don't use. At this point, I'm livid. I've packed the whole thing back in the box and I'm ready to send it back. To make things even worse, my wife's come out and said, uh, no offense, but I wonder if it's because you're not very tall. So she's now on an amber warning. And then it dawned on me a few days later, because it's my first time fitting these bikes, this rack, why don't I just do it on the floor and then I can kind of get a better feel about how it works. And it turns out I didn't actually need those spacers. After all, the bike just clips on like that. And then you've got this through bar with a quick release that goes through the middle. And then when that's in, jobs are good. Let's try and get these on the car. The first bike went on very easily. Let's try this second. So I just need to, look at that. And I've got the pin in my pocket. So as soon as the pin's in, you kind of, there really, because it can't fall off. Right, so that pin's in. Where's the other bit? just a case of tightening it up. They're on and they do feel really solid. I mean, we'll see if uh, 
We'll see if they stay on on the A1. <laughs> but they feel good. There's a little bit of flex in this. I think that's kind of needed. And here's the view from the inside of the car. Let's take it for a drive. So there's a bit of wobble, but I think that's what there should be. Um, and we're doing 70 miles an hour on a, a great British road. So there's a few bumps um, and they seem fine, but I'm gonna try not to look up too much. Well, not the best day for a bike ride. However, these were brilliant. A little bit of movement. There was some wind noise. So below 60, I couldn't hear them on the top. Above 60, we just started to get some wind noise, which is quite a good way to regulate the speed, really. I don't want to go too fast on these. We're off for a wet white ride, and then I'll uh, put them back on shortly. Gorgeous bike ride. Typically it stops raining and the sun starts to come out when we've finished. But I feel like an old hand at this now. It's really easy and I'm really pleased I persevered with it. So I just, what I'd recommend doing is strapping your pedal to the frame before you lift it up. This comes with it and it just stops the pedal going round when it's on top of the car, just locks it in place. Like that. And then back wheel there in the holder, that's on. And that goes on there like that. And I've got my bar ready. That holds it in place. I'll put the other end on and make sure that's nice and tight. And we're there. Well, after being strong enough to hold my bike on easily at 70 miles an hour, let's see how easy they are to get off. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is just a little bit freaky. That is just a little bit of one-handed. I mean, doesn't seem right, does it? And they're away until next time I need them. Well, what started as a disaster has left me quite impressed. I think they're really good. I think my biggest tip would be just don't get confused about the spaces. You might need a space if you've got really wide forks, but you probably won't, but you can buy the spaces separately. And my biggest, biggest tip is just fit them on the floor. You don't need to start on top of your car. Who would have thought? Well, I hope you found this video useful. If I've got any updates, I'll pin a comment below. And until next time, see you soon.